Hello, hello, hello. Sweet Saturday morning to you wherever you may be. So grateful to be here with you. So grateful to be here and to share what is near and dear to my heart. So grateful to see people from my old stomping ground, seeing Gila here and seeing Toby. So very sweet. So who else is here with us this morning? I would love to see who's here, see what is invoking you to be here. There's Krista McClintock from Kansas. And learning your plateau exercise mentioned somewhere that I can't now remember. Okay, Krista, I'll need more information, your plateau exercise. If you're speaking about the exercise that was described for this webinar for when I'm ready to up-level my life into the next level, the thing that I go back to again and again, that's what this workshop is all about. Plus, of course, looking at how that exercise, in addition to the practice, I'll just jump right into content, the practice of awareness, we talked about this yesterday, didn't we, Gila? Awareness plus or attention plus hard work over time makes the biggest impact. But I'll just wait on all of that. I just want to say good morning. Good morning, Elena from Seattle. So we are showing up here. I'm super grateful. Okay. So I'm making sure everything is already in here. Perfect. And so... As you're showing up, keep telling me who's here with us. Keep telling me why you're here. Keep telling me where you're from. We want to know. And so I'm just going to remind you or let you know that I'm going to keep on coming back to these questions. I'm going to keep on coming back to your comments. So the more that you engage with us, the more that you ask questions and give me an give me an amen and tell me what's working and ask, ask your questions and invoke additional uh, support, the more that I'm going to be able to offer up to you today. So as we enter in this morning, I'm just going to remind you that in these first few moments, if you haven't gone potty, go do that. If you need yourself a glass of water, I say, go get that. I have mine here, right here. I also have my smoothie. So if you see me dipping into this big guy, um, I'll most definitely be focusing on my nourishment as well, because I didn't have time for that earlier due to a bunch of other things I was doing. So anyway, I'm just right here with you. I want to know who's here. I want to know what's alive for you. I want to know what you're looking for. Ah, There it is. So it's so great to hear. Toby, you say you're interested in hearing more about the aging, maturing process that unfolds with new possibilities. And Krista, that exercise, I'm thinking that's the exercise. Let me know in the comments if that's if that's what you think it is too. And if not, we'll just roll with it. So it is a sunny Saturday morning here, and I come to you as uh, a reminder for those who might have forgotten or those who don't know, I actually live in Merida, Yucatan, Mexico, Mexico. And I've lived in Tucson before where Gila is. I've lived in Vernonia where Toby is. I have never lived in Seattle, but I've been to Seattle a lot, and I have never lived in Kansas, but I've been to Kansas. So, so here we are. All right. So questions are coming in. You're present. I don't want to waste your time on this glorious Saturday morning. So we're just going to jump right in to the content. So I'm going to go ahead and start by screen sharing for you. Okay. So here we are. Let's see how this shows up for us. There we go. Any second here, we'll be here. All right. So I'm going to just start out with the title of this presentation, and you've heard it coming in as two different titles. And so right here at the onset, I'm just going to meld these together because there's so much good information that I want to share with you today that is part and parcel of both of these descriptors. So the first of which is we are here today, quite frankly, to focus on the four secrets that every woman needs to know and nobody is talking about. Unveiling the secret and simple, simple but not always easy, ways that you can change your life for the better from the inside out. Now, why are these secrets? 
They're secrets because people aren't talking about them. You're going to hear me refer to them as pillars as well. And that's the very practical exercise that I think uh, Kristen is speaking about. And look, there's Janet. You did get to make it. I'm so glad. <laughs> I'm so grateful. All right. The other title, but same content, right? It's just like the kaleidoscope. We're just taking it a little bit of a turn to the right side. The Real Woman's Guide to Thrive Through Aging, Change, and Menopause, Unveiling the Secret and Simple Ways You Can Change Your Life for the Better from the Inside Out. The subtitle is the same. So here's the deal. There are some really practical ways that we can guide ourselves to thrive through any change, through empty nesting, if that's your thing, through the aging process, which we are all going to go through, and essentially through perimenopause and through menopause, etc. Uh, I had a client say to me yesterday, I am in a body I do not recognize. And I'm here to say that is the process through which every woman will go. So come on back to me right away on the get right away at the gate. If you're already multitasking, come right back to me. Every single one of us is going to go through the process of molting our skin from young woman to wise elder. And we are going to release and shed the skin of beauty, <laughs> of strong, abled body that is going to happen. And we can thrive through it all right? We're all going to go through that process. So if you're like, oh, I'm so depressed already on this Saturday morning, I'm out of here. I say stick around. I promise I'm going to share with you some really practical tools that are going to be of super, super high value with you for you today. Okay, so I'm just going to get rid of this little thing on the bottom that's bugging me. I'm going to hide that and I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to hit play. <laughs> Because we don't need that little extra thing. All right, so those are your two working titles. Okay, so in this little mini masterclass, I am going to teach you the four secrets for living your best life, right? The four pillars, if you will. And by the end of our time together, I promise you, you're going to have practical, tangible ways in which to move forward from this point into the next best and highest evolution of you. You're going to learn how to identify these four secrets, which are the pillars, the foundation of your vitality in your own world, which starts right here, your own world. And we're going to see how you can use those to live a more inspired, more resilient, and more impactful life at whatever age you are, whatever age you are. So stay with me until the end. And if you choose to go on with me, you're going to get a copy of this little super favorite booklet of mine, my little dessert recipe book called Dessert for Breakfast. So I've led retreats for going on, gosh, more than 20 years. It's hard to believe that I started when I was three, right? <laughs> No, I'm 51. I'm 50. No, I'm 50. I'm going to be 51 in December. I'm 50. Don't want to get my don't want to get ahead of myself. But my point is desserts and yummy, yummy, yummy foods on retreats that are uh, really nutritious and really delicious and packed with superfoods. That's my specialty. So I'm all about can we eat dessert for breakfast? So with that, I'm going to take a little bit of a tangent, as I promised that I said I'd be doing this right at the beginning. And I'm going to share with you if you were on if you follow me on Instagram, I'm going to share with you uh, my latest obsession. So here's what it is. It is essentially strawberry soft serve ice cream, and I like it at night. So I'm one of those who actually only does two meals a day. I do this little smoothie mid-morning. It's a little late for me. Usually I do this a little bit before 11, but I was busy getting ready for you. So I do my smoothie and then, and it is green. It's green, green, green. I won't say it's pretty, but it is sure, sure delicious and nutritious. And then I do another meal around 4, 4.30. So sometimes around 7, 7.30, I'm like, I just can feel I'm going to be hungry later. And so my latest obsession has been this strawberry soft serve ice cream. So I'm going to tell you about it, but I'm going to take a tangent off of the tangent, and I'm going to talk about this. This, my dear friends, was actually introduced to me by a student on retreat. This is my homemade 
cashew milk. And I make this every probably third day. And it is the easiest thing to make ever, ever. And here's how I do it. I have what is called a bullet, right? A bullet, which is a, um, it's a smoothie maker. And I take literally a small handful. There's probably 20 to 25 cashews in my hand. And I, they're in the, I keep them in the freezer, but I do that here because it's super, super hot all the time. So I take that handful of cashews and I drop it in my bullet. Mm -hmm. Then I'm steeping or I'm heating water for my tea. So I put that hot water in the bullet over the top of the cashews. So I've got just a handful of cashews. You can't go wrong. There's no like right measurements. Handful of cashews, water to about there just to cover all those cashews really well. So maybe double the water. You could go triple or quadruple right out of the gate, but I like to do hot water right in the beginning to get those cashews prepared. This is in lieu of soaking. Then I add like the tiniest pinch of salt, a glove, as my mother would say, a glove of maple syrup and a tiny little, just a little, hardly any, but enough because I like it of real vanilla extract. I let that sit while I steep my tea. So five, eight minutes. Then I fill my bullet with the, I fill it to the max line with water. So, which is about two cups or actually it's like this. So this is the, this is actually from my bullet. So my cashews go to about there. I go water to about there. Then I add my maple syrup and my salt, right? And then and my vanilla. And then I fill to here, to the max line. There's a little max line right there. I think I exceeded it when I made my smoothie. I'm such a rebel. And then I let it sit for five, eight minutes and I blend it. You do not need to strain it. And you have high protein, low glycemic index, really good for you, tea creamer, coffee creamer, or any way, place, shape, or form that you want to use a nut milk, rice milk, grain milk, seed milk, this works. This is the best ever because it's super simple. You have to shake it. So right now they'll be, the, the cashews are sort of hanging out in the bottom. It's just slightly warm. So it really should go in the fridge. Um, I'd put it in the fridge as soon as it cools to room temperature, put it in the fridge. And then I use this as the basis for all sorts of things. And I'm just saying that as a tangent, right? You can, you can add this to your soft serve if you're going to freeze it, but you don't have to. So I don't want to confuse you. This is just cashew milk. I'm just throwing in a little tangent from the tangent. My strawberry ice cream. Got to tell you this quick so we can get into the content. Strawberry ice cream. Same handful. Same handful of cashews, right? This time I fill it up with strawberries. I can do dairy. You might not be able to do dairy. If you can do dairy, you can add yogurt, unsweetened Greek yogurt is best because it's the, the liquid has already drained off. Or if you're using regular yogurt, just try to get away from the water. So you leave the water behind best you're able. Or if you're not using yogurt, then you can use a cashew milk or a cashew cream, which is really cashew milk with a little bit less water. So come back to me. Cashew milk or cashew cream is really cashew milk with less water. So it will be more like the consistency of tahini or of I don't want to say mayonnaise because that's kind of gloopy, but that thickness, not that texture, but that thickness. And then you can use that instead of yogurt. So it's about yogurt consistency. So then I have, so here's my whole recipe for my strawberry soft serve. You ready? Handful of cashews, two or three spoons of, yo of yogurt, vanilla, salt, same thing, tiny bit of salt. Why salt? Because there's, there's, there's departments <laughs> there's departments on your tongue and you want to touch into all six of the tastes so that your tongue can be awakened to all of the possible flavors. And when you add just a tiny bit of salt to something, the sweet receptors wake up. Hmm? So that's why we add just a tiny bit of salt, undetectable amount of salt. So again, handful of cashews, two or three spoonfuls of yogurt, strawberries up to the max line. Huh? Vanilla, salt, that's it, blended. My strawberries are always frozen. Did I say that? Strawberries are always frozen. I use frozen cashews and I use frozen strawberries, which does two things. It makes it a little bit more challenging to mix up, right? I gotta get in there with my spatula. 
And the other thing is it's ready to go. It's like a thick soft serve right out of the gate. So I can make it and eat it. I don't have to freeze it. But if I want to use fresh strawberries or fresh blueberries or fresh blackberries or mango, it's awesome. You can also do it by peeling all of your mangoes, put them in the freezer, but we'll do all this with the cooking class later. This is a whole other thing. I just want you to know this is like the best ice cream in the whole world. It's super delicious. It's got that little bit of sour and that little bit of sweet, and you can eat it for breakfast if you want to, right? But it is a, it, because it's so nutrition. It's loaded with healthy fats. It's loaded with protein. It's low glycemic index. The only nutrient that's going to send a satiety signal to your brain and tell you, okay, I'm satisfied. It's not sugar. It's not protein. It's fat. So we got to have sufficient fat in our diets in order for that to happen. We also need to have enough fat in our diets for us to not... Uh, for us to keep our memory strong and to keep our brain healthy as we age. Mm -hmm. So, all right, there's my tangent. So that and more is part of dessert for breakfast. So if you decide that you want to do what I'm going to offer up to you at the end of this, and I'm going to be really transparent, this program today is a precursor for the next program that I'm going to be offering, which is called the Radical Self-Care Roadmap, Okay. So I just want to lay that out for you. Now I'm just going to check in here. I would love to know, does that sound interesting to you, that yummy strawberry dessert? Or do you have any questions about that? Just pop those in the comments if you would, please. And then while you're doing it, just reflect on the time that we've had together in the last 20 minutes and tell me if you are already distracted. Turn off those distractions dear one. I want you to be totally present, not to me, but to this information and this, these opportunities that are going to move through you. Okay. All right. So we're going to jump right into the exercise. This is going to be packed with information. You can grab a drink of water and all you want right now is a piece of paper and a pen. Ah, perfect. Thank you. Piece of paper and a pen. And you're going to draw two intersecting lines on that. Toby asks, are the cashews roasted and unsalted? Toby, I buy the container that I bet you can get where you live too from Costco, because I think they're actually imported from the US here, and they're organic and raw. I bet you could do toasted and salted. You would want to make sure that they're not toast, that they are dry roasted. That's what you'd want to make sure. So you could totally do that, but you don't want any added oils or it, or then I wouldn't call it dessert for breakfast. Then I'd be like, uh, what are they using? Anytime other oils are used when they're roasting nuts because we can't control temperature. And often the oils that are used like planters and things along those lines are, they're just not healthy. You lose so much of the nutritional value when you roast in palm oils or even in peanut oils and you roast in oils that we can't control the heat. So a whole other thing. So I use raw, organic, unsalted and control my own salt intake. Thank you for that, that question. I thought raw wasn't edible. Ah, I think you might be getting confused, Toby. That's an interesting thing. The sh there's actually sort of a skin around a cashew before it's harvested and prepared for us to eat them, that is toxic. And that skin that lives, it's like a membrane, sort of like the skin of an almond, right? You can see that those are not on, on cashews. Those skins are actually toxic. They're actually toxic on peanuts too. That's a whole other thing there. They're carcinogenic on peanuts, but we're getting into a whole bunch of stuff, a bunch of stuff that will be part of another bonus, which is the radical self-care cooking class. But that's not today. So we're going to come right, come around and back to this practice. So you got a piece of paper and you put it put four quadrants, two lines. In one quadrant, you can put it smaller than this. I just wanted you to see it. In this order, upper left, the word do. Upper right, the word think. Bottom left, the word feel. Bottom right, the word know. In each of these quadrants, you're going to write what it is you're doing or what you could be doing. The sky's the limit. Think of positive things that you are doing for your health, for your well-being, for your vitality, right? That are taking care of you, that are filling the well. What are you currently doing or what could you be doing? So some of the things I am doing, I meditate every single day. I pray every single day, probably every single hour <laughs> at least. 
I go running a couple, two, three days a week. That's just me at this stage in my life. It feels really good to my body. I still love it. Works for me. Some of you may hike. Some of you may practice yoga. I practice yoga four or five days a week. That's less than what I used to do. My yoga practices have changed in recent years. You find what works for you. I oil my feet every day. Those are some of the things that I do. I get massage at least once and ideally twice a month. Those are things that I'm doing. And if you're like, well, I'm drinking wine, I'm eating potato chips, I'm uh, watching, sitting my butt on the couch and eating, watching Netflix, then I say, write what you could be doing. You're welcome to steal. You're welcome to be inspired by the time in your life when you were living your best life. Look to that. Drag those things in and write those things down. Then move into the think quadrant. What are you thinking? Are you thinking that you are held? Are you thinking that you are supported? Are you thinking that I got whatever it takes to live my best life right here, right? If you're not thinking those things, maybe you could think those things, right? What are you currently doing that's serving your highest good? What are you currently thinking that's that's serving your highest good? What are you feeling, right? Right now I'm feeling inspired. I'm feeling helpful. I'm feeling hopeful. I'm feeling connected. I'm also feeling relaxed. I'm feeling joyful, right? What am I feeling? I'm feeling abundant. I'm feeling devotional, right? That's what I'm feeling. And when I'm not feeling those things, I could be feeling those things, right? So you look at what is it that you're doing, thinking, feeling, and then knowing, right? Knowing. Knowing is like, I know that I'm an integral part of this universe. I know that the universe is conspiring on my behalf in every moment to give me exactly what I need to rise into my next best and highest evolution. If you're like, what what did she just say? Come on back to me. I'm going to say it again and I'm going to say it slower. Write this down. The universe is conspiring on my behalf in every moment to give me exactly what I need to rise into my next best and highest evolution. That's what I'm knowing. I know that in my bones and in my blood and I default to that again and again. So you've got your do's, your thinks, your feels and your no's. So tell me, I always had a sweet tooth, looking forward to desserts that are actually good for me, exactly. Okay, so tell me here when you read these for you, What are, tell me one thing, we'll just start with the do quadrant. Tell me one thing you're doing that's working for you. That's helping you elevate yourself. That's helping you live your best life. What's one thing you're doing? And please share in the comments. All right, go ahead and share that in the comments. What are you doing? And then if you, if one of these is a little bit weak, one of these categories is a little bit weak, Write that in the comments. I need ideas for thinking. I need ideas for feeling. All right, write those in the comment. We have a little delay here, so you know. I think it takes a little while for things to get from Vernonia and Seattle and all that. <laughs> right? Moving all those things up into the universe and then back again. I'm drinking a delicious probiotic smoothie with fruits each morning. Very good, exactly, that's what I'm doing. I do my morning smoothie, absolutely. Yep, bring it on, I wanna hear more of those. Toby, working on a gradual weight loss for before health and energy, 20 pounds so far. Good for you, that is wonderful. That is wonderful. Toby, you keep bringing up things that I want to talk about that are not specific to today. But since I got your captive captive attention, I'm just going to say a few more things. One thing I want to say about all this and more, (coughs) excuse me, is that weight is so intimately connected to cortisol levels. And when our stress levels are high and when we're busy, 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 busy beavers, it is nearly impossible for our body to find a set point and a weight that's going to serve us best. It's actually a protective mechanism against stress, which the body confuses with wartime, essentially. So come on back to me and hear that again, all of you. Cortisol levels, the stress hormone cortisol is deeply and intimately connected to your weight, to the weight that you hold on to in your body and in your life. This is really important to remember. 
because when we're super, super busy and we're stressed out on a regular basis, or even if we're not stressed out, we're just stressed, you stress, distress, right? All those things. It is virtually impossible for the body to find a set point that is optimal for living where you are because it's going to hold on to things because it confuses that stress level with wartime or with poverty, right? Impoverished times of body, mind, heart, and spirit. So just trying that on. Spending time outdoors. Good job, Gila. That's exactly right. What are some thinking categories? Okay, so uh, perfect. I'm getting plenty of sleep. Perfect. So thinking categories. Thank you for that. Think about it this way. If you close your eyes and someone that you know and love who's passed away, an aunt, a neighbor, a grandma, an elder, even Oprah, <laughs> if you so choose, right? Whoever it may be for you, Princess Diana, I don't know who it is for you, someone that's gone or that you've never met or someone you know, what would they tell you would be positive and useful and potent things for you to think on a regular basis? I just thought of one, breath is, breath is life. Water is life. Those reminders for me, water, drink my water. There's science behind that. Mm -hmm. Breath is life, deep and full breaths, bringing them into our bodies all the time. There's something called flipping the switch. I'm dropping all these practical things. Send the breath down and out the body on your exhale. Do this with me, come back to me, inhale to the crown. Exhale down and out the body for the count of six. Five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, four, three, two, one. Exhale, six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, four, three, two, one. Exhale, six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, four, three, two, one. It's called flipping the switch, where you exhale down the body for longer counts, more counts than inhaling up the body. Very simple, not always easy to remember. But what it does is it shifts your nervous system from functioning in the stress response, which is the lizard brain, the limbic stem of the brain. It shifts that from that stress response into relaxation response, where potential and possibilities are everywhere where deep connections are everywhere, where intimacy to self and to others, compassion and empathy moves freely through the body. Okay, so coming back to this, thank you for that question. Coming back to this, so now when you're do, think, feel, and no categories, all you're gonna do is circle one of those. That is going to be your pillar. So write those down separate somewhere separate, and we're going to come back to those. Those are your pillars. All right, moving on. If you are here with me today, I think you're here for one of three reasons. I think you are here because there's something inside of you that is longing for a deep and authentic life where you want to know and connect with your intuition and you want to honor your body's needs and finally stop pushing so much. Is that you? Or are you already slowing down? And although listening might not come easily for you, you are ready to stop being dragged into the woods because somebody told you you need to do this or you should do that or I need this or blah, 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 blah. Because you don't want to be on the outside. You don't want to let somebody else down. You don't want to um, hurt someone else's feelings because that shaky little voice inside of you isn't quite strong enough for you to go your own way and say, you know what, if I'm going to abandon something, it can't be my health. Or perhaps you just know that there's more out there for you, for you to feel, for you to experience, for you to be, and for you to share in this life. And you want to be sure of yourself for yourself so that you can make the greatest impact in this life. 
right? So look at those three and tell me which one, drop it in the comments, please. Which one is you? Are you longing for depth and authenticity? Or are you just ready? Like you're, it's like, it is time to listen to your inner voice and stop with the push. Or are you wanting to rise into your next best and highest evolution so that you can make a real difference in your life, in the life of those you touch and in the world at large? Drop it in the comments. So these four pillars, right? What you think, what you do, what you think, what you feel and what you know, these are what we want to surround ourselves with again and again. When we get to that second pillar, we're going to talk about this more. So tell me, which one are you? Are you longing for depth and authenticity? Are you ready to listen to your voice and stop pushing? Or do you want to rise? One, two, or three. Just drop a one for longing for depth and authenticity. There it is. Stop pushing. Make a real difference in the lives. Thank you. There you go. Yep. Love to see that. Love to see what's alive for you. So a little bit about me at this stage of my life at 50 years old. On the right-hand side, that is myself and my partner. His name is Hector. Hector, we'd say in the West, but Hector, the H is silent in Spanish. And he is my partner in Mexico and we uh, lead retreats together. And he's also my life partner. And we are in a uh, mud hole slash bubbling spring in uh, Zihuatneo, where I led a retreat, a women's retreat and a couple's retreat. This was from the couple's retreat where we were um, cultivating, right? Not cultivating. We were harvesting rather the mud, the same mud that is harvested by the Four Seasons for their spa from underneath the roots of this banyan tree from this bubbling spring in the middle of nowhere. The picture in the middle uh, is me when I was in Japan and I was uh, raising money uh, for an orphanage, one of the largest orphanages in Japan. And the little boy who's got his nose scrunched up like that, he was my sidekick all day long. And at the end of the day, the woman in the pink, who is my translator, told me that he was he wanted her to ask me on his behalf if I would marry him. <laughs> I kindly uh, said maybe when you're older. And then the woman in the black was the head of the volunteer team for the orphanage. And then up here, uh, you'll see a picture of the three of us, the three women. Uh, we all need sisterhood. This is myself and Dr. Deborah Kern, who's one of my longtime dear friends and mentors on so many levels. And Chris Northrup, who is also uh, a long-term women's health related mentor of mine. So together, the three of us uh, were out for dinner in Portland one time. So if you know women's bodies, women's wisdom or goddesses don't heal, Chris Northrup in her uh, earlier years um, wrote those books that have been translated into many, many languages across the globe. Practically for me, I have taught more than 20,000 hours and I've been online for more than 15 years. I am qualified to teach this stuff. My well is deep and full. And let me tell you, it's overflowing. <laughs> I constantly am thinking, oh, I want to tell people this. Oh I, oh, I need to. I forget that I'm just like in it and living it and doing it. And I've lived and I've studied and I've taught across the globe. I've I've um, practiced Ayurvedic medicine in India. Uh, I've lived and taught in Bali. I, I, of course, now live and teach in, in Mexico. And I truly do live these teachings. And when I wake up in the morning before the sun, 99% of the time, honest to goodness, 90% of the time, I rise inspired, rested, and ready for whatever is going to come my way. And I get at it, whatever it is. And if for some reason I wake up and I'm like, oh, and it's that 10% of the time when I'm feeling lost or feeling tired, I know what to do. I do the same thing. I get at it. I don't get in my way because I know in my bones and in my blood that it's not what happens in this life that determines how I feel and the impact that I make on this planet. It's what I do with what happens. So I get at it. So I'm here today more than anything because I want you to feel how I know in my bones and in my blood and in my experience what you can feel each and every morning when the sun rises. And many of you have studied with me and have been there with me before and you know this about me and how dedicated I am to being there for you in that way. 
Now, in all transparency, I have a program that's coming up and it's called Radical Self-Care Roadmap. The Radical Self-Care Roadmap. It is focusing on recipes and daily inspiration and uh, support for women who are going through change and transition. There is, I am there with you every single day for 28 days. We have an amazing membership portal that I'm going to share with you a little bit a little bit uh, later in, in this presentation. And so what I'm offering today is sort of the, the, the precursor to that, the information that says, hey, you know what, this is so worth it. You want to rise into your next best and highest evolution. Too many of us just sort of wither away at the end of our lives. I want you, I want you to leave this planet someday, on that far off day, or if it's tomorrow, I want you to be able to close your eyes and on that last breath say, I made a difference. I lived well. I am happy and I am at peace. And as my partner says, estoy completo, I'm complete. And I want that for you. So this talk is about giving you a taste of my approach to this program, Radical Self-Care Roadmap. And I would love to have you join me for those 28 days. But I promise you that there's a lot of really pure nectar as you've already experienced in this session. And I, this alone will be very worth your time. So no matter what you choose, if you choose not to join me for the 28 day immersion, I hope you pay this forward and share it with other people, share this upcoming program with other people. And I support you and I only want for you to rise. And I want you to feel full and like you've got something worth it out of this, out of our time together, because you have everything you need to rise. So I have a question for you. Can you imagine for yourself what it would feel like if every single morning you awakened, you felt so full, you felt ready to rise and to live your life because it is your life that lights you up. Because here's the deal, friends, being conscious and intentional with your day to day choices, what you do with your body, what's going on in between your ears, what's going on in your heart. And in your spirit in general is the single most powerful way to make an impact in your life, in the lives of those that you love and work with and touch on the streets and in the world at large. You cannot tap into someone else's energy, my dear. You got to have it within you. You cannot tap into someone else's clarity. You got to have it within you. And so I'm all about keeping you strong and well and functional and balanced and clear and operational. I want you maximally operational. <laughs> and the beauty of it and the irony in so many ways is that it essentially is by resting and by tending to your five senses, which we'll talk about. So here's where we're going. If you're like me, you like to know what the heck's going on. So I'm just going to walk through where we're going. We're going to talk about the physical body. That's that first quadrant. What am I doing with my body? Then we're going to move into your mind. What am I thinking? That was the second of the four pillars. Then you're going to move into the heart. What am I feeling? And then fourth, you're going to move into your spirit. What do I know to be true? My interconnection to all that is. Then I'm going to talk about what your next optimal steps are. And then I'm going to open it up for a live Q and a. So number one, pillar, number one, secret, number one, call it what it is. Your body, your body is your new slash old best friend. So I want you to drop in the comments. Come on back to me now. I want you to drop in the comments. What are the qualities of a best friend? Tell me, what are those qualities? Gila, we talked about this sort of yesterday. Who's in your inner circle? What are the qualities of your best friend? Tell me, of a best friend. Tell me, tell me. Hmm? Yes, yes, a best friend. <laughs> A best friend tells it like it is. Exactly. What else? A best friend tells it like it is. Susie says, patient. A best friend is patient. A best friend is accepting. A best friend brings joy to your life. Yes, a best friend helps us relax in our own hearts. Isn't it true? You can trust that they have your best interest at heart. There it is. Exactly. So here we are. 
Your best friend tells you the truth. Your best friend has no agenda for you to be any different. Your best friend does everything within their power to support you. Your best friend never abandons you. And your best friend wants you to be efficient, clear, at ease, and productive. Toby says, listens and supports. Absolutely. Krista also said, is supportive and encouraging. Absolutely. So your body does this. Your body is your new and your old best friend. Tells you the truth, has no agenda for you to be different, supports you, never abandons you. This body is going nowhere. As long as you are here forever in a day, as long as you are here, your body's going to be here. Now that's a good friend. And your body is constantly finding and doing everything in its power to be efficient, clear, at ease, and productive. Here's the thing. You don't need to be totally in love with every detail or aspect of your body to hear and heed the wisdom of the body. Here's what you got to do. You only need to listen. Have a willingness to listen. You only need to trust that there's a reason. I need to trust that there's a reason that this part of my body is tight. I need to trust that there's a reason that my neck is tight. I need to trust that there's a reason that I'm clenching my jaw. I need to trust. I need to be open to receive that wisdom. And I need to be willing to take tiny little steps. No, I don't need to cross the Grand Canyon in a single bound. I just need to take one tiny little step. Because if you take good care of your body, your body will take good care of you. And your body is the only place, dear one, that you are ever going to live. Like, have you thought of that? This is it. This is it. So why in the world would I prioritize something for someone else that they're probably going to (laughs) forget? Right? Why would I prioritize something or someone else that diminishes my ability to be here and to be of service and to be of clear service? to myself, others in the world for as long as possible. So Candace is one of my students and I just wanna share what her experience is in working with me and being, being a student with me and being in this program. I said, what are the things that you really get, right? What are the things you've gotten, like really physically gotten in your bones and blood from, from doing this program? And she said, now I start my day off right by prioritizing what I've learned works well for me and that keeps me grounded and productive. And now my toolbox for getting through life's challenges is robust. I know what to do and I do it. And now I make way better choices and take better care of myself. And it's no longer a struggle. It's an honor. Y'all, this is what this, this is what this work does. The second secret. So that's the body. The second secret, the second pillar is your mind. It's your command center right here. It's commanding what's happening. This is where thoughts become things. It's not a control center. Your energy is going to follow the attention that you give it. If you focus on how hard something is or how bad someone is or how things are going to hell in a handbasket, your energy is going to follow that. Your posture is going to follow it. Your digestion is going to follow it. Your immune system is going to follow it. Your cardiovascular system is going to follow it. Your musculoskeletal system is going to follow it. Similarly, addictions run deep. Addictions are manifestations. We'll talk about this in terms of mindset and shift, whether it's addiction to sugar or work or talking or shopping or wine or donuts, right? Addictions run deep. They are the manifestation. Don't kill the messenger. What's coming out is just coming out. You've got to get underneath that. Look at the mindset. You came by it honestly, right? We've come by addiction honestly. So we look at how it is that we open ourselves up to live more balanced and to live more well in our lives. Your mind is reliably your best friend or your worst enemy. And here's the thing, very different to a lot of of contemporary teaching. The mind through the way that I've approached it my whole life, and I speak about addiction because I come from addiction. I come from addiction very honestly, eating disorder. I've got my years of addiction awareness right under my belt. And the mind I've learned is not to be controlled, but to be understood and respected and redirected because your thoughts, my dear ones, will become things. 
right? This, this is a thought that became a thing. Somebody said, I'm gonna make a metal tin for olive oil. And somebody else said, I'm gonna draw a heart with a woman in Spain with her arms above her head, Spanish looking woman, right? Thoughts become things. Thoughts to make cashew milk become things, huh? Thoughts become things. Turn your face toward the sun. So come to me, come to me right now. If you've been slipping away or multitasking, come back to me, please. This is huge. If you take anything away from today, just from this isolated practice, remember this. Turn your face toward the sun and let the shadows fall behind. When you focus your attention on where you want to go, on what's the most impactful, on what you can do right now today, redirect your thoughts toward goodness, redirect your thoughts toward function, redirect your thoughts toward vitality and activating the actions and the experiences that are going to help you do that. When you turn your face toward the sun, the shadows fall away. Thoughts become your words, words become your actions, actions become your habits, habits become your character, and your character becomes your life. Thoughts become your life. Mm -hmm. So here's the deal. Treat your mind like an unruly husky puppy. I had a puppy one time and I was turned on to this book called My Smart Puppy because my puppy was a golden retriever named Surya. I had this puppy that always, when he was little, want, and most puppies do, right? They want to take their little teeth and get in, on you, get in on your skin all the time. And what I learned in My Smart Puppy, which I recommend for anybody with a puppy, is to redirect. So if I took my finger and just stuck it in his rib cage, anytime his teeth got into my hand and I stuck my finger in his rib cage, he'd go, hey, what are you doing? Hey, what's that? And he'd stop doing what he was doing to redirect his attention. And the bad behavior fell away. The unproductive behavior fell away. Treat your mind like that unruly puppy. The mind is not meant to be controlled. The mind is meant to be redirected. And then once you go, oh, that works, memorize it. Go close your eyes in your mind, in your body and say, that was so good. Please remind me when I'm at a choice point to go this way or that, that this is where I want to go. Like that's what I do with exercise. I actually don't like to run. I never have. If I could get all the benefits of exercise and never have to exercise again, Toby, Toby Fenzel, maybe you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> if I could get all the benefits of exercise and never have to exercise again, I would do it in a heartbeat. In a heartbeat. But I do it because I've memorized what works and I know I don't like to run, but I love how I feel on the other side of a run. Hmm? Okay, so then choose an anchor phrase. Like look at one of those anchor phrases. Choose one of your pillars of each of those areas of what am I doing? What am I thinking? What am I feeling? And what do I know? And then put them in all the places. <laughs> this is what you're going to do with that exercise. So you literally take a little piece of paper and you write on it. You can do it right now. You can multitask with that right now if you so choose, right? And then put this picture because I find that if I put it on the wall or somewhere where I see it when I sit on the toilet, that inevitably I'm my own best captive audience and I'm going to read it. And then just like right now, I can go back to my little toilet closet at 2350 Northeast Latte Way, where I lived when I first moved to Oregon some 20 some years ago. And I can see those four or five pieces of paper and I can remember 80 to 90 percent of what they were telling me to remember. They were reminding me to take, take long, deep breaths. They were reminding me that I never quite believed that one chance was all I got. They were reminding me to be free and easy in my breath and reminding me to be courageous. I remember those things. I remember the color of the paper. I remember the color of the colored pencils. I remember the words and I remember how that nourished me and how all of that was turning my attention to the sun so that the shadows could fall away. Hmm? That's the power of the mind, your command center, where thoughts become things. Your heart, the third secret, the third secret. This is your connection to everything, my friends. Your heart is where, 
what's happening in your mind, what's happening in your world, your inner landscape, and what's happening in the world at large come together. And so I offer that you have a very specific way, a very specific recipe for knowing that inner voice, knowing that heartfelt path for you, and then allowing yourself to be silently drawn by the strange pull of what you really love. It will never lead you astray, especially when you've been nourishing and tending to your physical body clear and it's ready and your mind is constantly focusing on what's going to support you. You know this, Gila. We've talked about this. You know this, right? I know you know this. Toby, you know this. Kristen, you know this. Janet, you know this. And why is it strange, as Rumi says? It's strange because it's yours. <laughs> and, and, and as Vivekananda says, to be well adjusted to a profoundly sick world is no measure of health. Right? We live in a country, I believe almost everyone here, if I'm not mistaken, has said at least that they're coming from the United States today. Right? We got a, got a U.S. group this morning. So what I want to offer and remind us is that we come from the most affluent country with more access to education and we have more focus on health and wellness. And we also carry 80% of the population, the adult population carries some level of chronic condition with them through their adult lives anxiety, depression, insomnia, malnutrition, or excuse me, malabsorption, psoriasis, eczema, migraines, vertigo, you name it. Not to mention the big guns, diabetes, heart disease, arrhythmias, like all those things. So you want to be strange. You want to be the one who's not quite like the Joneses because the Joneses, right? The Joneses in general are doing the normal thing and fitting in just fine, but fitting into normal in the culture that we've created is not serving our health, our vitality, and it is not serving the trajectory of our planet. The heart is going to tell you what is true and real through your thoughts and through your body. Keep your, keep your thoughts, keep your mind well and balanced, keep your body, keep your body well and balanced. Your only job beloved is to pay close attention. That's your job. Pay close attention. Notice what happens to your energy. Do I feel depleted or do I feel energized by this experience? And is, it, and is it a sustainable energy? Notice what happens to your thoughts. Do you expand or do you contract as a result of what you're thinking? And notice what happens and where it happens in your body. Is it always here? Is it always here? Is it always here? Is it always in your low belly? Do you curl your toes? Do you grip your arms? Do you scroll, scroll your face, scowl your face? Do you round your shoulders? Do you tuck your tail? Do you lock out your knees? All of these things are information. Remember the body never lies. And then look for those patterns and tend to those patterns. Begin to watch them. What we know to be true, and here's some practical science around this. What we know to be true is if you give somebody a pedometer, you don't have to tell them to walk more. They just start walking. If you show someone, you show yourself that there are these particular patterns, you're going to tend to those patterns and you're going to begin to shift them. If you notice you're holding your breath, you're going to shift the holding of the breath. If you notice you're gripping your toes, you're going to stop gripping your toes. It just happens naturally. So I asked Valerie, tell me about how these teachings and how this work garbage truck <laughs> have helped you and served you. And she said, listen, I am able to better discern what is true in my heart and come back to my center so much more quickly. And I can navigate high pressure situations and deal with deadlines with so much greater ease and joy. And she's in a high stress radio production position in San Francisco. This is what this work does. Don't believe me. <laughs> believe those who walk this path. What does your heart really long for that you haven't quite given yourself the space to bring into your life? So I'm going to ask you this right here, right now. You tell me, what is it that your heart is really longing for that you haven't quite given yourself the space to bring into your life? When you hear this in terms of physical movements and actions and things that you could be doing with your body, tell me those things. 
What is it mentally that would inspire you and move you? What is it that would inspire and move your heart? Tell me in the comments. Do you want to garden more? Do you want to have more flowers in your home? Do you want to cook more? Do you want to knit more? Do you want to spend more time with your girlfriends, your grandchildren, your dogs? Do you just want to sit more? Do you want to take more baths? Do you want to lie out under the stars and talk to the stars more? What is it? Tell me what it is. I'd love to hear you. Tell me in the comments. Post your response in the comments. We have about 10 more minutes. I'll go a little bit over, but not too far. So hang with me, please, please, please. Hang with me and you'll get desserts for breakfast. Hang with me. And you'll get one other offering that I'm going to send your way here in a few moments. So tell me, what does your heart really long for that you have, haven't quite given yourself the space to bring into your life? And then finally, your spirit. More time walking in the woods. This is the connection, y'all. More time walking in the woods with no schedule. Yay! Balance and a sense of peace and joy. Yay! I'm going to ask you, Krista, how do you get that? You want more balance and a sense of peace and joy? Think about what are the things that give me more balance? What does that look like? What gives me a sense of peace? What gives me a sense of joy? So get under those those qualities, because those are descriptors of what you're going to get. I want to know and hear what it is, what it is that's going to get you there. <laughs> Janet, yes, please. All of that, all those things, right? Isn't it so true? So your spirit is the way you do you. It's the strange part coming in and through and saying, this is the way I'm going to show up on this planet. This is the way that I'm going to be here. This is my way. This is my unique way of being in the world. This is Lisa. This is one of my students' daughters, and uh, I love this because Lisa, at that age, that little girl's teaching us that there is definitely a better way for you to be doing what you're doing, and that way is your way. And it is absolutely never too late to follow your spirit. Never, ever, ever. And the beauty of it is as we get a little bit older, perhaps we can sort of, as we cross through that, cross over that initiation and pass through that initiation from youth into being a sage elder, we can model for ourselves, others, and the world what it looks like to take good care of ourselves and that we are like the pulsing vibration of goodness and honesty and truth without all that stuff around it. We're just doing it and being it by walking in the woods, by arranging flowers, by playing with puppies, by sitting on the porch, by waving at the neighbors when they go by. Follow your spirit, dear one. So I ask you, what did you love as a child? And then I also say that where you feel small is where the doorway is. In other words, where you go, I don't know if I could dance. I don't know if I could do that. I don't know. That's a doorway into something that you love, into gardening, into crocheting, into making, into knitting little hats for the babies in the ICU ward, whatever it is. And start small, if you will. Start with socks. You want to learn to play the piano because you loved it as a little girl. You want to return to that? Buy yourself some socks with pianos on them right? You want to you wanna plant more flowers? Buy yourself a floral necklace, right? Whatever it is, socks, jewelry, music, let it grow you. Start small. Surround yourself with those memories. Don't let them become something that you just throw into the back of a junk drawer. Who you are and your spirit and your uniqueness is not junk, my dear. Keep it coming forth and then get a little comfy with being uncomfortable. We know this to be true, that people who are well and healthy and balanced are willing to lean into their own edges. Do a little more of that. Talk to your sisters. Be a part of a community that's going to help you do that. And I'm going to talk about how you can do that. Another student, Lori Jo Daniels out of Portland. She's an artist, she's a nature lover, and she is a fairy maker, like for real. You go to the beach with her and she's like, did you see that little one on the beach? And I'm like that what, that fairy? And I'm like, no, I didn't see that fairy. <laughs> and you go back and there's like a little piece of seaweed that has like a seashell stuck to it. And you look at it and it's like, that's, I, yeah, I can see, that's a fairy. So she's, she's a fairy maker. 
She's a joy maker in and through. And what she said about working and, and working with me and doing programs with me is, oh my gosh, there is no going back to who I, there's no going back to who I was. And I'm now confidently walking the path of my own authentic calling. I am so inspired. I say, listen to what your body, your mind, your heart tell you, and then go in the direction that expands you. That is your spirit. There is no wrong way. However you're doing life, it's all right, beloveds, but I want it to be all A-L-L space R-I-G-H-T. You know this. And that better way in your life is your way. So to identify that way and to have a path and to have a community and to have a guide, that is the way that you find your way. And the only difference between where you are right now and where you want to be essentially are the steps you have not yet taken. So here's some ideas for your next steps. I told you we'd be coming here in step number five. Take your pick. You can keep doing what you're doing and keep getting more of what you've been getting, or you can follow a proven roadmap. It's just that simple. You choose it. Margie, the mama Alisal, she said to me, to say that your program has been a salve to me this past year would be an understatement. So come back to me. I want you to hear this. It sustains me. It reminds me to live with open eyes and an open heart and to show up and do the best that I am able. I feel connected to other women in this program and in my life. And I'm so very grateful that you are choosing each moment to live these teachings and to bring them to light for myself, others, and in service to the world. Margie, like all of us, is a woman who is way more and way more potent than the sum of her parts. So we're putting all those pieces and parts together. We're showing up completely and entirely. And it is that integration and connection with a path, with a guiding light, and with a community of women who are doing the same and championing you for showing up in all of your grace and all of your glory that makes all the difference. There's a word you hear me say, I'm here to help you rise into your next best and highest evolution. I want to talk about the history of this word to rise, to rise from one sleep, to stand up, to rise together, to be fit, to be fit, to make an impact. There's a fitness required to be fit, to break out of the mold, to be fit to do the very best you can with what you've been given for as long as you can, for as long as you're gonna be here. To travel, to rise for a journey, journey with me, beloved, journey with me. To move upward and to increase in your presence, to rise in fortune, in abundance, of body, of mind, of heart, of spirit, of vitality, of energy, of joy, of peace, to prosper, to come into existence, to rebel or to revolt <laughs> or to be radical as if to say you don't have to get all out there and go all crazy on us, but you got to walk a path that's a little different than what's been happening or the way you've been walking if you want to do it differently. So I have a question for you. Would you like me to help you rise into your next best and highest evolution starting now? Simple question. Because what I want for you more than anything is I want you to take your next best steps. I want you to rise. But that ultimately isn't for me to decide. Those of you who've studied with me and worked with me and walked with me, you know that. I can only tell you what map I've used and I can only hope that you glean something useful from it and from my journey. So here's how I see it. You can create, you can attempt to create a life-friendly self-care program, speaking of this all in self-care terms, without a roadmap and without a community, like-minded community where everybody's moving in the same direction. And then you'll run the risk of waking up perhaps a year from now where you are now, or perhaps having lost ground, or you can put both feet in and commit to rising into your next best and highest evolution with a roadmap, with a community of like-minded women, and with a timeline in mind, 28 days, and with me as your guide. You are invited to, this is where I speak about what's coming and invite you in. 
Radical Self-Care Roadmap is the only guided program of its kind that not only shows you exactly how to create and implement a life-friendly self-care program, but it also teaches you how interconnected your self-care is to the abundance, meaning, and vitality of your whole world. This program is all about making self-care a priority and absolutely an indispensable part of your life. You won't drop self-care after this program any more than you'd stop brushing your teeth. It's that kind of important to keep the well full. It's that kind of important to cultivate ways in which that your body can listen to its inner messaging so that oncogenes don't become cancerous, so that blood pressure doesn't continue to rise and rise and rise so that our bodies can feel balanced, can feel strong, can feel vital, can digest foods and life experiences, can sleep well through the night, can be present for our children and grandchildren and for the children of this world that are so needing our attention. This is Radical Self-Care Roadmap. It is radical. It is self-care because it's all about mindset and recipes and focused attention and ways in which that we move together. And it is definitely a 28 day roadmap that I'm with you every single day, bedhead and all. Here's some of the basics of this course. In this course, you will pinpoint what is really in the way of you taking better care of yourself. You'll put into practice daily self-care that does not feel like another thing to do, but instead raises you up inspired and ready for anything, anything. If we've learned anything in these last two years, we've learned that you never know what's coming. <laughs> you never know what's coming. You never know what's going. And here we will build a foundation for vitality, for ease and impact in your life through very small doable steps. This whole program is here to jumpstart your health physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually to clear the cobwebs. And then we together, you will, with my support, with my guidance, with the tools that I use and that have worked for me and work for students and clients, you will create a personalized, practical, radical self-care plan just for you. There are four modules. You learned about what the, the essential modules are today body, mind, heart, and spirit. There are 12 lessons. There's quizzes, there's PDFs, there's calendars, there's supporting resource, resources. There's playlists and easy peasy ways to implement what you learn as we go. There's time for practice and implementation. There's daily morning checkups encompassing the lessons from each weekly module where I come to you every single morning live and recorded to answer your questions, to touch in with you, to offer you inspiration, to offer you a little bit of light for your day ahead, something for you to focus upon. And you all, you will be surrounded by a community of like-minded women walking by your side who are championing every single step you take as you take it. Your first bonus, if you decide to walk this journey with me, is dessert for breakfast. You get that. I explained to you what that's all about. That is loaded with my favorite recipes. Key lime pie is to die for, and it is vegan, and it is rich with healthy omega-3s and omega-6s. It is rich with protein. It is low in glycemic index, and it's going to make you and all those people that you love very happy. Bonus number two. Ah, we'll stop here for a moment. I want to say that perhaps you think that I, Brit, innately have something that you don't have, right? Perhaps you think I innately have something you don't have. I say that's not true. Simply, I have a history and a map and I follow ev that I follow every single time I'm ready to rise in whatever way I'm being called to do so. And I use that map. Now bonus number two. And Gila, I'm seeing your question about talk about self-care in a body that's changing, that some days feels unrecognizable. Absolutely. I'm talking about that right now, dear one. That's what it's all the same, same, but different. We just have to pay attention and recognize that our body's going to ask us to do something a little differently today than it asked us yesterday. We got to pay attention to food. We got to pay attention to rest. We got to pay attention to aligning ourselves with the natural rhythms of the planet. We got to pay attention to all the simple ways in which 
that we know work functionally, set yourself up with regulation, 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 rise at the same time, go to bed at the same time, meditate at the same time, make your smoothie at the same time, align with the moon, align with the seasons, make the changes as the seasons come, follow your heart in that way. Let your body be your guide, take time to check in, quiet the mind and let your body speak, not your analysis or your story about what it is. That's not important. Stop holding on to that and gripping onto the story. Human beings are great storytellers. Come right on back to the heart. So that's to answer your question. I know you know this is true. The answers, if I could just whip on right back to that slide, the answers are within you. Quiet this. The intellect, the intellectual human being part of you wants to tell you what to do. There are no answers there. Ha! Ha! It doesn't come from here. It comes through the interconnection, the alchemy between what's happening in your physical body, what's happening in your mind, not the story about it, what's happening beneath the story, what's happening in the heart. Do we feel retracted or attracted, drawn toward or repulsed from? And what's that really say? Not the story around it. And then what is your unique path? Take those tiny little steps, but you've got to set up regulation. You've got to line up your body with the rhythms of nature. Those are what are going to help you walk through. Perfect. In alignment with that, we do monthly Q&A. You're going to keep on coming to Q&A. This is our bonus. Number two, for the whole year, for the rest of the year, you're going to keep on coming and you're going to be invited to the Q&A where you can ask me anything. Bring your struggles, your challenges, your roadblocks, and let me work my magic. <laughs> I got a lot of years. I got a lot of tools and I got a lot that I know works because I've seen it. I felt it in my own life and in my students and my clients for going on 30 years now. <sighs> then if you do the work and you're still not satisfied seven days into this program, and you're like, nope, not for me, you can get your money back. Full refund, period. Third bonus, Radical Self-Care Kitchen Class. We've touched on some of these things. We're going to be doing a lot more of those pieces. Come and come and come in. So here's how it rolls. Radical Self-Care Roadmap. Just to lay it out, what we've gone over today, the program in and of itself is a very, very good value. Very, very good value at 249 the value when we see it in comparison to other programs, it's upwards of 500 or above. So value of 525, dessert for breakfast, $15 monthly Q&A value of 195, radical self-care kitchen class value of $79. When you add those things up, it comes up over $800. And your, my offering for this program is, is $249. You can spend that on a weekend away. We're talking about a tried and true program where you take your attention and your focus and you put it with hard work and you practice it together in community where you held or where you supported over a month's time and you will feel the impact. So you can come to this program if you so choose. It's 28 days, it's four modules, it's 12 lessons and it's 249. How do you do it? You just go over to my website, BrittBSteel.com, and you register. Radical Self-Care Roadmap, enroll now. Super simple. Go ahead and hit the Buy Now button, and you are in. You simply go through the process to register. After you register, one of the great things is we have a Facebook community that is already rich and robust and ready to go. There's lots of joy and laughter and introductions happening in there already. And so you can be a part of this private community. Then this is really exciting to me. Your membership, <laughs> your membership has its own platform. So once you register for this class, you're going to, or this, this program, you're going to be able to go back to it again and again and again. It's going to show you what you've accomplished, what you've been through, what you finished, where you are along the journey. You're going to be able to have your PDFs. You're going to have the full module. There's going to be videos for each module. It's all going to be right there. And it's super easy to access. You go to my website. It says enter membership. You put in your email. That's your username. You put in your email. That's your password. And you are in. It picks up where you left off and it will be here for you forever and a day. It's not going anywhere. All updates 
will be there as well. Tis the hour. So here's, if you decide you want to do this and join me within the next hour, this is the bonus I'm giving you. And this is an alignment with uh, what Toby's asked. This is an alignment with what Gila's asked as well. Navigating the change. We are going to have an hour long group coaching call where I'm going to dive deep into menopause. I'm going to dive deep into nutritional specifics for menopause, for aging, for how we take better care of ourselves, for how the body is different, for how collagen is changing, for how we keep the mind strong, what the research tells us. We're going to be looking at ancient wisdom, modern science, and practical tools in these in these areas. And so this is, again, going to be a recorded call. It's going to happen after the start of Radical Self-Care Roadmap, but it is for anyone who registers within the next hour. So we're going to circle back. I think you're here because you want more than anything to live an authentic, meaningful, good life, and you are ready to take that next step. Or perhaps you're just ready to start listening to your intuition and take start taking better care of yourself. And you've had enough of not doing that. Or you're here because you know that you're living below your potential and there's no better time than now to change that. That's why you're here. You might find that you're already feeling exhausted or overwhelmed and that you don't have the time to do this course. I say Go for it and try it. Give it a chance. What have you got to lose? Seven days in, if it's not serving you, all you got to do is say, hey, not serving me. And out you go. You just let me know that and I give you a full refund. If you find that this course isn't a good fit for you, same thing. You just let me know and I give you a full refund. This is a, what do you call it? There's, this is a risk-free opportunity. Perhaps you've tried online courses before and it wasn't a great experience. I'm here to say this is very different. This is different because I am there with you 28 days in a row. I'm not throwing the information out there and then saying thank you for your money and walking away. I'm going to be with you every single day, every step along the way. And the community of rich and robust and amazing women, including our grassroots membership of the women who've been a part of this program, who helped me design the program, are going to be right there with you, with us, every step of the way. It's not like other online courses, but try it out. Don't believe me. Believe you. Dr. Mary Lynn O'Brien says, learning from Brit is the greatest gift you can give yourself. She studied with me for over 20 years. She's one of the most well-known uh, retired pediatricians in the state of Oregon. Candace Shitter, a student, said, it's been more than a year since I took my fourth course with Brit, and I continue to tap into the wealth of content. It is a profound gift to receive guidance and loving support from someone whom I feel I have so much to learn from. So there it is, my friends. That is Radical Self-Care Roadmap. Any questions that you have? I know some of you had to, to rush out. I wanted to say thank you so much for the extra time. I'm just right here. I'll hang around if you've got any questions, and uh, we will go from there. Take a drink of water. Stretch your body. I'm barefoot here, standing on my floor. Drinking my water. Hope you wrote down your strawberry ice cream recipe. Hope you got your cashew milk recipe written down for you. Any other questions before we go? Anything at all about the program, about what I've said today, anything I'm missing? Come on over. I know some of you had to rush off. So as you're doing that, we'll just flip the switch one more time. This is one of my most favorite breathing exercises, and I'll just I'll just uh, build it out a little bit more. Flipping the switch is where you close your eyes. You imagine a red thread running along the vertical axis of your body. This works, y'all. This changes the biochemistry of the body. You inhale in and up that red string from the base of the body in and up to the crown of the head and beyond. You exhale and send the breath down that thread. Drop the chin, bring the head back over the spine. You can do this seated or standing. Just hold your own weight. We inhale for the count of four, three, two, one. Exhale, six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, four, three, two, one. Exhale, six, five, 
four, three, two, one. Inhale, four, three, two, one. Exhale, six, five, four, three, two, one more time. Inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, six, five, four, three, two, one. There it is. Thank you so much for being here. I don't see any questions coming in, so we'll leave it today. I hope that you found this valuable. I hope you received benefit from our time together. It's an honor to teach with you. Please know too that you can always join our Rising with Britby Steel free Facebook group that's available to you as well. Never hesitate to come on in there. Sending you so much love, so much grace. Glorious day to you. Thank you again. Ciao.